Let me reiterate, uh, since uh, you're thinking of a question, uh, what makes this legal? Uh, that's very important to understand that. Because our Constitution was created in sort of an illegal fashion, as you, uh, you might guess, uh, because at the time, the Articles of Confederation required that there be unanimity to make any changes at all. And so when Madison and the Philadelphia Convention referred the Constitution to, uh, to uh, state conventions rather than state legislatures or to the people, uh, they were making sure that the elites would maintain control of the process of right of constitution. Now, the simple fact that the nine states voted for this legislation, that was a self-actuating feature that required uh, that these states would now be governed by this new law. And so the self-actuating facet of this, uh, in opposition to the Articles of Confederation, was that the people, by voting for the new law, the ratification of the Constitution, they made the process legal, they made the decision to accept the process, and two, they made the Constitution legal, creating our government. We're doing the same thing. We're asking people, do you want to be empowered to make laws? If the people, in a majority of the people who voted in the last presidential election, vote in the affirmative, for the National Citizens Initiative, the very fact that they're voting for that makes the process the, where Philadelphia II gives them the opportunity to vote on this, makes that process legal, and obviously makes legal the content of the process, which is the proposition of a constitutional amendment and a federal statute packaged together as the National Initiative for Democracy. Do you see that? And that's what makes the whole process legal. We're doing exactly, we're putting, amending the Constitution exactly the way our Constitution was created over 